because you don't a game doesn't allow uh it doesn't allow live streaming but uh just want to just check if i can just if there's anything here that says how to change it i think i think you should be okay to just join in the f what you call it uh, hold on just two seconds just speak for a bit whilst i uh just check on the stream itself just so i can see if that you're Unfortunately, on uh, on the stream. Uh, sorry, mate. Just to uh, just uh, just um, just check in the party. See if there's any buttons to say if you can like just join like stream voice or whatever it is. I can't remember what the setting is, but uh, uh, you're not being heard on the stream, unfortunately. No, it's um, a f there's a uh, there should be a setting to uh, there should be a thing that says that you can join like it's Twitch chat or something like, or something like that or, or Twitch audio. Uh, you yeah, you should, I mean I mean you're already in the game. I mean just go on the party. Uh, hold on, just two seconds. Okay, so open the open the party up, and I go into the party itself. No, 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 no. Go, go into the actual party that we're in right now. Uh, there should be a button at the top that says um, "Party is being broadcast" and says "Allow my audio." We could could do it other way around, see how that works. Just you invite me to a party. Apologies for the technical difficulties, guys. I'm just trying to make sure that we can hear both commentators here. Uh, but of course, just in case you're joining us, this is WOR round five for uh, at the Netherlands in tier five here. So just bear with us whilst we get these uh, issue, uh, technical issues sorted out, because I know for the last couple of weeks that I've had, that where I've had 
a co-commentator that we've not been able to be heard. So we want to get this sorted out whilst we can. So in the meantime, we can see that VRCGC and Flatbus are going fast. Have gone fast at this moment in time. I say that as Artem goes in between them. BRT Wolf, um, who's Flatbus's main championship rival at this moment in time, is in the P in P4. Don't know how much running in the wet either dry or any of the drivers would have been doing at this moment in time as there's a yellow flag in sector two and sector three. As I'm trying frantically to find out who it is. Um, just, again, just bear with me two seconds, guys. <laughs> As you can see there, Slapbus has just set in a pole position here. It's very much a different sort of, uh, hopefully, there's something different here as we see Artem. Hello? Is, is there now... Oh. Yeah, no, I don't know what the issue is, because if you, if you just to open the party itself, if you open Saisha Samuel's party, it should, there should be a thing at the top um, that, does say, that should say um, uh, party is being broadcast. Oh, okay. No, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. But of course, unfortunately, we're not. We're missing quite a bit of the qualifying session, trying to sort this out. And obviously, qualifying is such an important thing around such a tight and twisty circuit like Zandvoort here. Um, and again, I must apologise for uh, trying to sort out these technical issues, but um, we just seem to be having issues here. Uh, but and in the wet, they wouldn't have no. There's no chance. I mean, I don't think most people really practice as much in the wet as they do in the dry as we can see the Ferrari there I think of oh, that's it's Fantomassi spin around it's easy enough to spin around that, that corner in the dry and let alone putting putting down the power too early in the wet how much torque these cars create it's very very easy to do that and end up spinning around Again, like I was trying to, as, as well, I'm uh, sorry, I've been completely thrown off my loop as well, and I'm sure Edited Fawn has been as well. Um, but uh, it, it is a very, like, qualifying is so important that as we see in a McLaren in the barrier there, or more or less, with Harje there. And because it's so so difficult to overtake, as Artem now sets a 118.6 as Edited Fawn. There we are. Hello. I can hear you through here. Uh, as to whether the chat can, as to whether the stream can hear. 
Okay, but... All right. No, I'm I'm not just sure if there's something good. Have to look through it, and so that might annoy the drivers themselves who are gonna have to mute us. <laughs> now, there's a black screen on. Oh, I've been disconnected from the game. Oh dear, I, I, I get a million of difficulties, guys. I can hear you again in the party chat. I can't. I don't know if again it's all about the stream itself, so I don't quite know. Uh, I'm not actually in the game right now, so it's a bit weird. Yeah, uh, mind sending me an invite or? Oh no, man! I can. No, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I've managed. I've managed to join off someone. Yes. Yeah, I've, 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 I might need it where someone else has to, in the future, just host the thing. No, no, no sorry, it's not your fault, is it? I mean, we, can, we can still have you, we can still have you, we can still talk about the race, can't we? Just that other people, it's just a shame other people won't be able to hear you. I mean, I think at this moment in time, just needs a bit of consistency for these last five minutes of qualifying. Uh, <laughs> we can actually watch the race, because as things stand, I mean, there's been a load of changes for the pole position time here as the track gets drier and drier. <laughs> and therefore faster and faster. With Slapbus now regaining pole position. And Cabolda, who hasn't really, I mean, he's a quick, quick driver, but hasn't been in the running for pole position at all for most of this season. So not, he's been up in the sharp end, but not quite for pole position, so... But this weather has certainly made, made shaped up the running order for today's race. Uh, you've got people like Isvan Tomasi, who was up, in the, up for the win last race. Um, Bibin, who's been up for the sharp end a lot this season, further down the grid. Uh, Alex Dagu in the midfield, even though he's quite consistent at being up in the top three or four, as we see the Haas of Cribalda there drifting through turn five. Impressive stuff there. Of course, he's just set a purple sector too as well. Now, in, in the wet, in the, in the dry, you'd usually try and take that corner as tight as you possibly can, but in the, in the wet, you just spin out. But 18.5 does bring him up another position as Isvan Tomasi also joins him on the second row of the grid as things stand. Three, uh, just under four minutes to go in the rest of his session until the chequered flag. I mean, got enough time for one or two more runs here. 
Uh, you'd, you'd imagine that they have, they've been fueled up for a good few laps here, uh, and they'll just be trying to run over like, more and more laps to try and spread the water out and just to dry the track out as much as they can. Dear Hunter, obviously a race winner already this season, into seventh position. He's very good. He's always someone who seems to have a lot more race pace when they do qualifying pace, or at least they have in these last couple of races. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what he's able to do in the rest of this race. Seventh isn't the worst position in the world. He came, he was in eleventh place last race, and he ended up in a podium position, I believe, in the end, or fourth place. Yeah, no, it was fourth place as we got an Aston Martin round in the final couple of corners. I think that was that was not Pingu. That was TLR then, as he's now crashed out of the session in tenth position. That's not going to be helpful for his chances of getting scoring big points today. Alex Daegu still uh, on a fast lap now I believe we're going to stick with him because he is able to produce a much better lap than 11th place I'm sure as he gets a bit of oversteer there coming through turn four and five a very interesting set of corners there as this has so many different lines here uh, and he really got to prioritize the exit there but it does act like a slingshot through as we saw in the real life race and also, I'm just noticing now, between Slapbus and Quibalda, sorry to take it away from Alex Daegu for just a second, six thousandths of a second between the two, between first and second place, that is absolutely immense from the two drivers there, as Alex Daegu goes a bit wide there, as he looks to push on for a better lap time. Still got the potential to go for one more lap after this, uh, with how many seconds are left, just under 40 seconds to go. As Slapbus now puts a bit of breathing room between himself and Grabalda as Alex Daegu sets a purple second sector. That's the, that's the place where everyone seems to be improving the most, it would seem. As we go through the last couple of corners now, a bit of soft braking there and flat out through the final corner now. The very steep banking there helping with that very much. And it's going to be interesting to see what Alex Daegu can do. He brings himself to P6. Gonna be hoping for something better there, but it can't be too disappointed with that. It wasn't the best lap, but certainly wasn't the worst. As the other Aston Martin now is retired and Pingu. Everyone now who's set the time as we see a Ferrari round of Isvan Tomasi. And Fawn, any any thoughts so far? Of course, yes. Yeah. So uh, maybe it's a case you were mentioning that it was that everyone's taking two or three laps. Maybe it takes, uh, maybe it's taking that many times to try and actually just warm the tyres up and maybe get the best out of them. Uh, as we can see as well, I mean, Slapbus is even more breathing room now between himself and the rest of the field here. And his title, of course, his title rival at the moment in BRC Wolf, nowhere to be seen in seventh position. That's absolutely poor. From BRT Wolf. 
I mean, he's someone who can definitely make the most of a bad situation, so I definitely wouldn't write him off so far. But after losing the lead of the championship last round, after scoring zero points following both a late race uh, incident and a post-race penalty, um, it's going to be quite difficult for him to really start to gain on Slapbus when his ch championship rival is on pole position. Absolutely, he was just banging in like fast time after like just fast lap after fast lap after another fast lap. This is, this is just a whole um, just point of waiting now um, and something that is very going to be very interesting to see is just had they actually set up their cars for a dry, wet, uh, dry race or, had, or are they anticipating it being wet in the race as well because it is easier to, easier to drive with a dry setup on a wet track than it is to drive with a wet setup on a dry track so have I take so have I actually taken the gamble of getting a better track position knowing that um i'm up i appear to be in the race um this is <laughs> uh, uh, hold on to I, 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 I can check for you now. It's dry all the way through. Um, I, I am in the race. Uh, I don't. I think we might need the lobby restart here. Uh, <laughs> I, I am in the race itself. Uh, <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Edited Fawn's car at the moment. This is abs. What's it? What is this? I'm just. We've swapped roles here. <laughs> it, that, that is true, actually. Oh, of course, yeah, I'll just stay out of everyone's way and just. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, apologies, apologies for this guys. You're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get a terrible view of lap one. I'm gonna have no understanding unfortunately. And uh, hopefully no incidents happen. Hopefully everyone stays in the exact position and then the chaos begins on lap two. Uh <laughs> but this is but, um, you know this is because I disconnected from the game. I think I'll need to leave now then. Yeah, so... Oh. <laughs> this has been... Um... A very, very bizarre sort of stream. <laughs> this is just complete chaos that moment. So, uh, but, uh, I would, I was half, I was half want to apologise, but also half just say about how chaotic this feels. Um, it's, okay, there we are. That's why it was. I accidentally pressed A instead of Y. Yeah. I was looking, yeah, a bit, we'd be able to relay the t uh, team radio. This is going to be very weird. Uh, I, 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 might, I might need to jump, I think I might need to jump in just to uh, retire the car. 
just so it's not um, interfering. Uh, you 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 in the car? No, oh, it's not letting me take control either. Oh dear. I'm so okay. I do. I definitely do have to apologise for this seeming very amateur hour at this moment in time. Um, if, we, if we can get edited for this with that car, that'll be all right. But if, if, if worst comes to worst, uh, we'll have to. Uh, I'll have to ju jump back into that car and just, uh, after the first couple of corners and just retire the car myself um, at the end of the lap, just so it doesn't interfere with like the Dynamo Dan, Pineda, Pingu, etc., etc. Um, but assuming that we can get everything sorted out in on that front, um, we are going to be underway in just a couple of seconds time. Of course, yes. Um, as we see the cars now come round the final turn of the formation lap. Uh, It's a, a very, very peculiar situation here uh, as everyone's gone for very different sort of tyre um, strategies here as we can see most of, it, most of the people have gone on medium tyres but VRCGC hoping to try and get a better launch off the start on the softs but it is a very short run to the end of the line there, as we can see with AWS um, graphics there. Um, for what the tyre strategy is meant to be. But we are now on to the starting sequence here. As we are five lights now. And we are underway as there's already chaos here. As there's a couple of jump starts there with Isvan Tomasi going into the lead. But he won't hold that for very long. Because he is going to have to go for the pit lane very quickly. As I can see my AI has already overtaken someone by pure... <laughs> So that's a bit annoying, and unfortunately for Dino Dan, I he can overtake them from uh, safe fair. But it's a very side by side now between VRC and Slap Bus there. There's a bit of wheel to wheel banging there, and VRC GC is able to get in front now of Slap Bus there. And there's Quibaldo who qualified so well, is already out of the session as there's a virtual safety car. And I think this is a perfect time now for me to uh, get my car out of the way. <laughs> so. So if you don't mind just sending an invite for the game. And there seemed to have been contact, but the Corralda incident seemed to have been a contact with Wolf, according to the Discord chat that I'm looking at at this moment in time. Um, so we'll be able to reflect upon that later on. Um, Yeah, that's right. I mean, Alex Dager is also inviting me. So he keeps inviting me. So I, 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 I have to I have to apologise to Alex at the end of this, just because he keeps inviting me over and over, and it's uh, <laughs> and he probably has doesn't have any understanding as to why he keeps seeing Sasha Samuel uh, has left the session on his thing. He's like, this is a commentator. Why does he keep leaving? <laughs> Cheers. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in this session at the moment. Um, I'm go. I'm just gonna because we're on the safety car. I'm just gonna retire off the side here, um, just because it won't uh, actually affect anything there. Um, so I'll just I'll just leave now and we. Oh no, wait, no. I'll be a spectator anyway. So that, that's actually worked out all good in the end. Um, I 
Yeah, so we could actually get underway with proper um, just commentary duties now without having to worry about any more. <laughs> well, we'll do it. We do still have to worry about the fact that we've uh, not got any uh, audio on your end, unfortunately. But I will be able to relay what you are saying for the stream to hear. So, of course, it's fantastic. I mean, he's royally screwed here at this moment in time. I'm surprised he's not taking his drive through penalty now. Is he not going to... If he doesn't take his drive through penalty at the end of his lap, he is disqualified. Same goes for Bibbin here, uh, which I find it very curious as to why they haven't decided to just bite the bullet, because they're going to be last anyway. So it's very, very curious to see there. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I apologies about that. Yeah. Yeah, I, it might be some, it might be something where it's on, it might it might just be that on my end that it doesn't allow me to have that situation be the case. So maybe if it end, if you end up getting the Twitch account from Of course, yes. That sounds good. No, thank you very much, mate. Take care. Unfortunately, in the end, it will end up being another solo stream. So that's two weeks in a row, unfortunately. Uh, as, much, as much as I do love commentating on this, I, don't, I doubt you'd want to just hear my voice the whole time, although I'm sure some of you doesn't care. And this is exactly why I'm very surprised that Isvan Tomasi didn't pit under the last lap, because now he's going to be even further behind. At least if he'd gone through the process of doing his driver penalty under the safety car, he would have been at the back of the pack at the end of his lap. He would have been very well within the end of his race. And now he's going to be disqualified. Does he realise this? He's going to be disqualified. Is he? How has he not been disqualified? I'm so. I'm sorry. What's what's going on here? He's got a drive through penalty, does he not? Yes. As he as he's making contact now, and he's spun VRCGC. Is this guy actually serious here? Is what is this man doing? I don't know if that's the game having glitched or what, what's going on there. Because, I mean, Bibbin's not pit either. Do, have we not been told they've got drive through penalties? Uh, that, that, that has surely got to be on the game. I, I, I don't want to be... Because he's racing so... Because uh, both of them are very clean drivers, at least from what we saw last week. So I don't, wanna, don't think he would be a griefer. If, if he was going to do that, he would have done it last week as well. But that was very curious there. So, of a game... We know this game can be very buggy, but uh, and this race, is, uh, this lobby has exemplified just how buggy it can be. Because now we've got two people who are meant to be on drive-through penalties, having not taken drive-through penalties, but still in the race, despite them meaning to be taken within three laps, uh, at least in the game. Uh, and they've been spun round, and it's just unless I unless I'm wrong on that in Twitch chat. Um, like, inform me if I am wrong there, as we see a number of cars go into the pits now, such as TLR10, such as Pingu, uh, such as ILR Bibbin. Yeah, you know, ILR Bibbin, he, he's, he's gone into the pits now, he's taken his drive through penalty. It's on Tomasi, he's gone in for his drive through penalty. What is, what's gone on? Yeah, evident, evidently, okay, I guess it wasn't, didn't have to be free, I just didn't, under, okay, I just don't understand the decision process behind not having fit under the safety car. Unless the safe, you're not allowed to under the safety car and it takes, uh, and it allows you a grace period in green running. Which makes sense to me in real life, but I don't think the game operates like that. I don't think I've ever seen that in the game on 18 lappers or, I've never had that in a league race, so that's a first for me which explains my 
confusion there. But anyway, to get on to other matters at this moment in time in regards to the rest of the order, it's Slapbus in first place, comfortably controlling the lead at the moment, with Alex Daigu two seconds behind in second place, then Deer Hunter, followed by Sam95, who got a podium in the last race, followed by the other McLaren of Harjay, who had an incident in qualifying as well, so it's good to see him up as high as he is. And it's the two Mercedes drivers fighting it out at the moment, uh, uh, VRC GC overtaking his teammate into turn one there. VRC GC obviously caught up in that unfortunate incident there in the previous lap or two. But seeing where Slapbus is right now, see, seeing the gap he's got at this moment in time, you've got to think at the moment, knowing the pace that he does possess, it's looking pretty comfortable for him at the moment. Alex Daigu, fast driver in his own right, so definitely can push on later on in this race, but not necessarily looking the best for him right now. Is he starting to have a train form behind him? Well, Slapbus, he's starting to pull away. I mean, look at the interval times there between all the drivers. It, it's very... It might just be a case of Alex Dagan maybe not being that big of a fan of this track. Obviously, I'm sure he would have had a bit of... He would have been held up a bit from the incident ahead of him between Tomasi and... Um, a VRC GC as we see Sam 95 F1 trying to make the move on the outside as they, Deer Hunter maybe goes for a look on the inside of Alex Daigu there so kind of a three way battle there without ever going to a three wide sort of situation there as we try and, as we take another look at the tyre situation here Sam 95 F1 on the soft tyre they're going to start degrading very shortly so it's going to be crucial for Sam95 to get ahead of the two drivers ahead of him uh, so not to lose out too much he will get the undercut just by virtue of having to pit sooner as to whether or not the, he has to go into the mediums or the softs you would imagine the mediums can go to the end of the race um, if he was to pit at around lap 16 or so on the softs but his softs are going to be absolutely crying by that point so it remains to be seen. It's a very interesting sort of uh, situation with the tyres here, and I've so I'm not actually that familiar with how things are with esports things. I know that it's not the highest degradation at this moment, uh, not the highest deg circuit, but it is a very tricky and technical one with a lot of fast corners, a lot of banked corners. Here. The car, uh, these three cars now a bit further away from each other as than they were a lap ago. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely going to hurt Sam 95 F1 a bit more than it will hurt Deer Hunter and Alex Daigu. It, but now you, you can really see that train forming behind Alex Daigu now. I mean, you can see just slap us. He, he's a well, he's a cut above the rest in this race at this moment in time. Just absolutely faultless performance in these opening laps here. He, but of course, it's a very tricky, very technical circuit. I know Hungary likes to get banded out a lot as the Monaco without the barriers, but I think since the introduction of, of Zandvoort into the calendar, I think this is the true Monaco without the barriers here. It's a lot more technical, a lot more tricky. As we can see now, Alex Davis really picked up the pace of Slap. He's now with that outside of DRS range of Deer Hunter. That's going to open the door for Sam95 to fight against the driver ahead of him without that doesn't have the help of DRS anymore. So well, as for, there's a bit of desync there, as I nearly got very, very excited about the possibility of a crash there. And it's going to be a, quite a rudimentary overtake in the end. You could see that Deer Hunter didn't have much in the way of ERS either. It was left very, very defenseless in the end. Sam95 just going very smoothly. That is nearly a look on the inside of Deer Hunter on the inside of that turn five there, but it wasn't really much. It wasn't really very convincing there. As we're going to take a look now at the telemetry for everyone there, we can see that there is 8% um, left on Deer Hunter, whereas 36% of Sam95 obviously a lot better with his tyres at this moment in time. So, uh, with his EOS, I must apologise. And it's a very tricky circuit to regain your EOS, just given the amount of downforce you have to put onto your car. And because it's such a technical circuit, once you get thrown off your rhythm, you're going to be losing a lot more time. And I wonder if uh, Deer Hunter's gotten damaged now 
because he's lost three positions in the space of a lap. Uh, two in one corner, one or two corners there really, it, to VRC, GC and HJ. Uh, that's a very curious case here. And we see, we see now Deer Hunter is pulling into a pit and there you go, he, he must have been, he must have damage here and just having a look here, does he? As we see through the face of a man, yeah you can see they're taking off the front wing, he was given damage unfortunately there. Uh, I don't know if he was given damage or if he just picked it up at some point by grazing a wall. That's very unfortunate for him. He's now outside of the points. Not a very good day for Alpine at the moment as they currently sit outside the points for both of them. Both, Obviously, both Alpine drivers race winners this season. It, as the former race uh, title leader at this moment of time looking to overtake his teammates who is now on the hard tyres. He can go to the end of the race on those. He probably won't actually suffer too many consequences here, but he will be on the harder tyre, you'd have to imagine, for m most of the end of his race. Dynamite Dan in seventh position right now, the Red Bull driver. His teammate currently in first, but Dynamite Dan, obviously, I like to bring this up every time we talk about him, but the biggest jump in tiers between uh, of anyone in WOR, going from t tier 11, to tier five, um, but he is now under threat from a very, very rapid RTMG 71 right now, and it's going to be a very easy move in the end for the man in the Williams using DRS and EOS to his advantage. In the end, Diamond Dan didn't really fight it too much, he knew that it's going to be not very much worth fighting Artem. So, maybe it's just a case of just thinking, I'm going to tag along. Just try and keep pace with him and use the DOS to my advantage. Don't try and fight him because then I can catch up to the rest of this pack here. I know, because we know that Artem's rapid at the moment, so it'd be very, very wise just to keep in touch with him. As there's a McLaren that's RJ in the barrier there. Is there going to be a safety car, as you can see in the background there? And there's going to be a virtual safety car at the very least. And if you're in the front running pack now, what do you do? Do you pit under the v VSC? to go onto the hard tyres till the end of the race or do you wait it out a bit longer? I think with the way things are at the moment I think you maybe just about stay out if you're on the medium tyres. If you're on the softs and you're like, and like Sam is you maybe, I think you maybe take the gamble. If this was a full SC I think everyone's in the pits but it's going to be interesting to see now we're going to be on slap but see what he does he stays out. Alex Dagu he's staying out. Sam95 he's going into the pits as is VRC GC, both on soft tyres. That is very smart decision making in the end. And obviously very slow pit stop here, for, uh, pit lane. Uh, and, he, and wow, VRC GC thinks the mediums can go to the end race, as does Sam95. Uh, we've got, also got the Boa Torito uh, into the pits as well in the Alpha Tauri. Full VRC procedure has been completed. Uh, well, not completed, but has gone on for the duration of their pit stop so that's about 40% time saved under the say I, I, can't, I can't actually remember if that's the uh, VSC or the safe, full safety car statistic but we're under back, underway again with green flag running it's going to be interesting now to see just how much of an advantage that will give VRC GC and Sam 95 and there's now a situation now with VRC GC himself as he seems to have had a run in with Sam 95 and never mind scrap exactly what I've just said they've just gone side by side at a through turn 6-7 uh, and they seem to have hurt each other's front wings each yes so they've both got bro broken front wings so all that hard work up to gain time under the safety car has all been for nothing in the end and the leading VSC runner is now Boa Torito who has thrown on the hard so all the, all the intrigue of the strategy there just thrown away just mere seconds after going away, uh, going under the green flag running again and that is the perils of the Netherlands there just such a tight twisty and challenging track just to get yourself mastered and there we go, having to pit for the second time in two laps, <laughs> unfortunately for him. Uh, and that does mean that we've got a very, very just rudimentary sort of race at the moment, I say, as we've got FRG, FGE Pingu overtaking BRT Wolf into, the, I think, the final corner there, as opposed to the exit there. I think he's disconnected, yes. I mean, you can see he's ghosted out, so I think that's why he got overtaken at the corner. 
So, very, 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 very poor day for like, just for the championship leader there. I don't know if he still needs an invite or not. I'm going to invite him anyway, just in case he does need an invite still. Uh, so bear with me for just a minute uh, whilst I try and get this sorted out. I mean, I'll tell you, what, I'll ask on the, in the Discord if he does need one. But um, in the meantime, we're going to be following on with this fight between AVS Ban and Artem for a fight for third at this moment in time. Um, that seems to be the closest battle we've got outside of maybe Borotorito and Bibbin, but that will be, and Deer Hunt as well, actually. So they'll be a lot closer to this third turn one, as there's now a yellow flag for an Alpha Tauri in uh, Pineda. There. I don't think they'll cause anything just then. Probably hurts the grip of the track at that particular area. It's going to have heated up his tyres quite a bit there, so he's got to be careful not to spin around again. But I mean, it's very easy to do that. That second to last corner really invites you to carry more speed than you realistically can do as we see the brakes are lighting up in the rims of the tyres, of the wheels there. Yeah, so it's, he seems to be fine there, but we're going to, again, I mean, never mind, ABS Fan is now 1.4 seconds behind Artem, as we see a bit of a wiggle there from Dynamo Dan. Uh, if, but this is the main fight going on at the moment, the battle for sixth. Despite being 16 seconds behind Dynamo Dan, Nobuto Ito is in sixth position and, hold, and just holding on to deer life at this moment of time. ILR Bibbin, Deer and Deer Hunter behind him as Deer Hunter looks to have a much better overspeed on ILR Bibbin. Is he going to make the move into turn one? He does look like he's going to be able to. Squeezes him just a bit but enough within regulation and he gets the move done. And that's going to be good news for um, ah, Bortorito as there's an incredible move from Deer Hunter on the inside of turn five. Doesn't quite stick at this moment in time just because of the better attraction coming out on the exit and is he going to try and make the move up turn six no he does not that's very very audacious there from deer hunter now something you absolutely love to see from a race driver doesn't care about like playing tactics out as we see a spin from bib in there but as I say, doesn't care about playing tactics, doesn't care about just trying to get further up the grid in time. Because he knows he's 16 seconds behind Dynamo Dan in fifth. This may well end up being the best position he can possibly get this race. So he may as well go for it as soon as he can. Just try and pull away as soon as he can. But now this is where we might start seeing pit stops from the leaders as well. So this will be very interesting to see when about goes ahead start to pit but we've got deer hunter not quite close enough on this occasion uh, he's obviously feeling that obviously there may be a case of Borotorito just being faster in that final sector just being faster in those last couple of corners whereas in the opening stage of the lap he might be a lot slower um, and that's maybe why deer hunter maybe he's sussed it out and that's why he's trying to make these moves into unconventional areas but hasn't gone for anything this lap so far. As we see, Yellow's in sector three. That's Dynamo Dan, unfortunately. Uh, the race of attrition starts going on, and that's the safety car now out for the second time in this race. And no surprises there, given where we will see the car parked up, as you can see on the mini map, just on the exit there of the corner. And yeah, that, that is very easily a safety car. That's very unfortunate for him, as he was having a good race in fifth up to that point. Um, yeah, so I mean, very, very, very simple decision now, or should be at least, uh, to go on to the, uh, go into the pit stop. Slap bus doesn't feel like the softs can go to the end of the race, as Isvan Tomasi does pick up a three second time penalty. Um, and he's now brought up to seventh position as he's in the pits. 
Uh, not these people, these, these drivers here, are all on, going to have a very, very good run to the end of this race because these drivers in front here are going to be on the hard tyres as they don't feel the softs can go for another 20 laps. But evidently, I mean, it's Van Tomasi. Let's have a look at what tyres he's gone for. He's gone for the softs. Bibbin, he's gone for the hards. Pingu's on the hards. Uh, BLT Wolf's AI has gone on to the hards. Um, Deer Hunter's on the softs. Bortorito, he's still staying on the hards he's on since he... Uh, I can't remember if he crashed out or the uh, first safety car. I mean, we've got to check the age of those uh, tyres there. Uh, yeah, no, since, since I think he's run around, yes. But, very, I mean, this is exactly... If you're a slap bus right now, this is exactly what you do not want. You're having a very comfortable race, just controlling the race. Four seconds ahead of the person behind you, but now that it's all been neutralised here, as Slapbus has gone into the pits, he's gone for an audacious gamble here, as he's now got a five second telling penalty for speeding in the pit lane by accident. Now Alex Dago is the leader of the race, but on a harder compounder tyre, but Slapbus does have the softer compounder tyre. I'm very surprised no one else went with the mediums till the end of the race. I would have thought that would have been the perfect compound to be on, um, because Everyone, I don't think anyone else would have been on the, had gone from medium medium at that point. So very interesting strategy here from Slapbus on a track where track position is absolutely everything. He's gone, he's bet on himself. He knows that he's got the pace to overtake everyone. But could this be the wrong gamble? Because not only does he have to overtake everyone, he's got to pull out five seconds to Alex Daegu, which when they're on soft to on, on the same compound of tire, he pulled, managed to pull out eight, four seconds in half a race. Can he do that after overtaking everyone with undoubtedly less laps to go, but crucially on the softer tyres? So if you want to find out, make sure to stay tuned uh, to this very, very exciting Tier 5 race. The Just making sure that BRT Wolf does get uh, invited in the end there. So hopefully we can see him rejoin very soon and maybe make a fight for the point positions to come the end of the race. And there's another driver in the pit as Slapbus again. He's taking a third. He's taking a third pit, pit stop in three corners. And this is undoubtedly to get rid of the penalty there. But I don't know how. I mean, he's now on the softs now. I mean, they're going to be dying off towards the end of the race, but it's, I'm struggling to know whether or not that would be that was the smartest decision or not. Because I feel like he could have pulled out five seconds on the mediums compared to the hards. He had the, he had the pace for it already. So now he's given himself an, ex, an extra uh, six cars to overtake. But no five second time penalty. Will he be able to do this? There's cars in front of him that are on the exact same compound of tyre and are no slouches themselves. BRT Wolf in ninth position at this moment in time. Will he be able to join in by the time the green flag running comes again? And safety car is in at the end of the slab. But we'll be going to green flag running now with Alex Daegu, the McLaren, who's always there with thereabouts in the races to finally to lead on and hopefully maybe get his first win of the season. He is very unlucky not to have that opportunity to really challenge at the end of last week's race, having been taken out in a racing incident. But it'll be interesting to see how, if he does this. He seems to have gone very quickly. He seems to have gone already, but no, he's slowing back down. He's slowing way back down. 
There's a very long run to the start finish straight. So when will he bolt? He's got Artem behind him to keep him for company. He's going to try and throw him off, and he has. He's got a much better start than Artem. But Artem's going to have the slipstream there. He's going to try and make the move. No, he be not. No, he isn't. He's going to stick behind for now. But we do see Bortorito up into fourth position for a brief moment. But it's Deer Hunter's managing defender's position on the outside. And then the VLCGC is involved in yet another incident in this race. That's, that's torrid luck for him. But now we see Bortorito and Pingu, who's managed to come up into P6 out of nowhere. Torito is just absolutely nowhere with a hard tyre pace there. Side by side for a very unconventional area. It's going to end in tears potentially. And it's going to... No, it's not. How has it kept, been kept clean for all that? It's Fantomasi now making his way up into six. When it looked for a moment like Pingu was going to be it there. That's absolutely incredible stuff there. As Deer Hunter now making his way up into the podium positions yet again in this race. Uh, into third position now after overtaking AVS Fan. Uh, Artem in second with six temps behind Alex Dago at the moment. The slap bus at the moment uh, having taken up three positions so far since the safety car restart. He is on the soft compound tyres but he's not the only one to do so and he doesn't have the crucial track position. This is only going to be an incredible last 15 or so laps to go as it's free wide going into turn one now. And it's Sam95 on the inside of Bortorito. Is he going to make the move stick eventually? Now, yes, he is. He's on two steps softer tyres, and that move was never really in doubt at the end of it. Bortorito, very frustrated in his own right. Sam95 just got the softer compound, and that's not to take away from Sam95's pace as well. He's been driving a stellar race so far. But his teammate Isvan Tomasi is in fifth place at the moment, having recovered well after an incident which saw him take, accidentally take out VRC GC at the beginning of his race and also come back from a drive through penalty. Could he end up in the lead of his race eventually at the end of things? It's yet, to be, yet to find out really as Alex Dago is still in control of this race at this moment in time. Just behind Artem who's keeping up the same pace at this moment. Uh, just behind Deer Hunter as well. Any three of these drivers, even extending back to AVS Fan and Isvan Tomasi, all could be within a shout of this race. Isvan Tomasi obviously got that three second time penalty for track limits, but we're going to go behind now as we look as Tomasi looks on the inside at turn one. Again, it's just a case of having a much better compound attire than AVS Fan. I mean, Tomasi got to make the most of the moves right now. He's two seconds behind Deer Hunter at the moment, at the moment. but he does have much softer tyres and a lot of laps to go. The only problem will be was, is when it comes to the end of the race, the hards will come back and they will be faster towards the last, say, six, seven laps. But, so that's why it's absolutely crucial, he's got to make these moves now and these drivers in front, they're no slouches, they're going to make it as hard as they physically can for him to pass them. But he's going to have a lot of opportunities to do so. He's already gained three temps in this course of about a third of a lap. Um, as we see Slapbus now, his gamble is paying off a moment, he's back to where he was before he ended up pitting in the first place for mediums. So it's going to be... To seventh now. His next stop is Sam 95, also on the softs, uh, and is also going for AVS fan on the hards now. As we're going to just follow these guys here now, as he doesn't quite make the move on into turn one, which has been the most popular move in the race so far, and it's quite clear to see why it's the only real hard braking zone after a straight. Um, not going for any uh, remarkable moves into turn five or out of it, really. Just kind of rudimentary as things are at the moment. Just making sure you keep things clean and get round to turn one again for the easiest move possible. And I mean, as I say that, it doesn't look like Slapbus subscribes to that ideology there. He's going to try and make the move on Sam95 there. And he doesn't quite plan out there, but I'm just hoping he hasn't picked up any damage because there was a bit of contact if you look closely. I I'm very surprised he tried that because. There was a DRS zone just there. If he just kept close and maybe just tried to get a better exit out of that corner, he maybe could have just gotten him into the end of that second DRS straight. But he's going to have a second bite of a cherry now, coming out of the final 
corner, but at the same time, he is going to have, 795, he is going to have a DRS, but has had a poor exit than slap bus. So, who will it be that comes out on top of between these three drivers? We've got ABS Fan, who's going to be pulled alongside by Sam95, who takes a move on the inside at turn one. He finally gets the move done, and slap bus is going to try and look to follow him through at ABS doesn't look to fight it too hard in the end and Slapbus you can see is getting very impatient now he knows that these are very crucial moments in the race if he's got any chance of winning it at all he's paid a very very he's paid a very big gamble here can he make it stick and Deer Hunter he's on the soft tires he's a leading soft tire runner at this moment in time he's got to be frustrated but he's only in third at this moment in time We've got, we're going to have to stay on the deer hunter at, this moment, at the moment just because of how close he is to the lead of the race. And I know Slapbus is also very close to Slapbus. It's very difficult to know who to switch between. <laughs> but as we're closer to turn one here with deer hunter, it'll be interesting to see is he able to make the most of a bet? Excuse me, I must apologise for that. Um, What's going to happen here? Artem only one and a half times. He's going to go side by side. Ar Alex Dago had a poor exit out of the final turn. It's going to be Artem for the lead now, and Deer Hunter's just stuck behind once again. This is why track, uh, this is why track position so important now. And there's been an incident here, it would seem, for us. Um, is that Tomasi? Yes, it is. Tomasi has been hurt massively. I didn't quite catch what that was. I just saw there was the other flag. The rest of us into P4 ahead of Sam 95 as well. So very very good luck uh, not necessarily just luck and there's now an alpha tower there i think that's Borterito, unfortunately no i think that's pineda actually yes that is those pineda and that just a very not the best weekend for the alpha tower team um now in 11th and 13th uh and it, it just it's been a good recovery from some of the Alpine in one half of the Alpine garage uh, in Deer Hunter. I think BRT Wolf is still disconnected, I would imagine. But Alex Dago is starting to really struggle on those tyres. He's getting poorer and poorer exits each lap. He is going to have DRS, but Deer Hunter has got to make the move now. He's going to try and make the move on the inside. Is going to be contact potentially there? I don't know. It seemed very tight there. But. I don't know if there's contact there. I don't think anyone came off that badly there. But Deer Hunter finally getting the move done. He's uh, one car and 11 laps away from getting his second win of the season. His first obviously coming in Russia. But if there's anyone who's going to object to that idea, it's certainly Slapbus, who's only now five tenths away from Alex Daegu. It's absolutely incredible. And there's now Pingu, who's had an unfortunate off. Uh, again, this track is so, so punishing. It's one of those old school tracks where it's just grass around the outside, so much undulation as well. And it's so many tight, twisty corners. Artem on the hard compound, setting the fastest second sector of the race. How incredible is that? He's, he's gaining time to Deer Hunter on the softer compound is just, are the soft starting to go off a tiny bit i mean if if you're if you're artem if you're alex Dagu, this is that is exactly what you'd be wanting to know wanting to know and wanting to hear in this moment in time as slap bus isn't quite able to catch up to alex Dagu. going around turn five for the 27th time in this race 10 more to go as we see the williams driver in first followed by the Alpine of Deer Hunter, Alex Daegu, Slapbus, Sam95. Any of these top four drivers could still be within a shout of winning this potentially. Uh, maybe he's a strike off Alex Daegu. I don't think he's quite got the hard tyre pace at the moment, which is unfortunate for him because he's been driving a stellar race. He's been, he was in the top two for 26 laps, just undone because Deer Hunter is on the soft compound as is Slapbus, who is looking to make the move sooner rather than later. Deer Hunter, about a tenth closer than he was last lap, but I don't think he's really going to be able to make a move on Artem for the lead this lap. 
but again just another fall he's very struggling so much around those last couple of corners and this is going to be a very easy move in the end for Snapback he's been so so strong through those final two corners into the exit of the final turn into turn one in the end he makes a very easy move and there's this, this Isfan Tomasi off again yellow flag at the final turn in sector three um, don't quite know what that's about but he might end up boxing in the end yeah it looks like on the mini map that he is boxing and he's got a three second time penalty now unsure quite what that's for um, but we've got to stay on board now as Deer Hunter's really pushed this lap compared to Artem he's only four he's four temps now he's two he was two temps about a corner uh, a turn ago you probably won't try and make the move into this turn here because then Arthur will just have the DOS coming down the start finish line. It makes sense to stay behind for now, especially since he knows he's got the over he's got the overspeed now. He's definitely got the pace to overtake. He's so so much closer, about half a second faster uh, closer than he was at this point last lap. He's got to try and make the most now of a vulnerable Arthur without DOS. And he's gonna he's got a much better exit he's gonna go on the inside he's barely got any eos of his own but it doesn't matter he's got the drs advantage and he's in the end very comfortable coming into p1 off the race for the second time this season he's leading a grand prix race and slap bus again now is hot on the heels of deer hunter no not deer hunter apologies that is artem in the williams it's gonna be a struggle for artem to hold him up for too much longer but if you're deer hunter right now you're begging artem to defend like a lion um, against slap bus because the more because we saw in that first stint on the medium tires slap bus was absolutely immense in terms of his race pace he, and there's another yellow flag at the second to last corner and that is another alpha tower I, I won't be surprised if, I, if we end up seeing Canada or board uh, i mean Pineda in this instance, I uh, wouldn't be surprised if we see him retire, or Boratorito really. And you can see now Slapbus getting very impatient at trying to pass Artem, he's got so much more speed, so much more grip. He's already overtaken him by going into the final corner, that's absolutely insane. And Artem is going to try with all his might to try and defend, but in the end it's just not worth it. And. If you're Deer Hunter now, you've got seven laps to hold on and try and stop Slap Bus, the reigning champ the championship leader at the moment by 11 points. Deer Hunter currently third in the standing. This will be, I think, if things stand as, say, as they are, I think he does go into P2 of the standings, given that BRT Wolf is now outside the points after a very, very unlucky and unfortunate weekend for him. Just a whole load of technical issues there and I think just instance there. Uh, but just a double check up on the standings. Yes, Deer Hunter moves into, P, uh, into P2 at the moment with how things stand. But he's just got to hold on for another six and a bit laps. And I mean, it's, it's already going to be a difficult task to defend from the lead. But even diff more difficult task when the driver behind you is the slap bus. In Russia, he didn't quite have to contend with slap bus as per se. He's gone to the def he's gone defensive already. He knows that slap bus is going to try and make the move potentially, but he's broken the slipstream for now. Uh, he's to save for another lap. Six laps to go now in this race. As things stand, it is Deer Hunter, slap bus, Artem, and Alex Degu in the top four. Sam 95 now catching up a bit more to Alex Degu. He's potentially going to be find himself in the top four at the end of this race. And again, why? And again, it's always these same few drivers in the top, uh, minus one or two there. Isvan Tomasi was it up there last race. BRT Wolf, you can usually find up in the sharp end of the of the race, and they always just so so close together. And look at Artem at the moment. Despite being on the hard tire, he's able to keep up with Slap Bus. He's hoping that these soft tires just go off completely at the end here, but. We can see Slap Bus here, so much closer to Deer Hunter now. Four temps about there. He's about as close as you can realistically want to be 
try and start make, thinking about making a move into turn one now. But he's not going to have the luxury of being against someone who's on a softer compound of tyres. Artem, he's out, but we're going to have to go back to the fight at the front. Is Slapper's going to try and make the move on the inside? No, he's not at, this mo at the moment. He's just going to play it patient for now. Artem, I think, with a bit of a moment there, uh, which has brought Alex Degu into P3 now. He's always one of those drivers. He's got a great race pace. He's always able to try and... He's great at staying out of caution for the most part. It usually trouble finds him more than anything else. And here we see Slapbus with just having much better EOS management than his contemporaries. I mean, I say much better. He's on 37% right now, but given that we see that Deer Hunter is on 15%, 16%, that's quite a fair bit compared to the driver in front. And he's gonna, he's gonna definitely be just using this EOS just to try and practically push uh, Deer Hunter through these last few corners in the final sector. As you can see, he's just, he's even closer than he was. He's about a tenth and a half closer than he was, two tenths closer than he was last lap. He's definitely gonna try and think about a move now. Deer Hunter get again going to want to try and go defensive immediately because we know all the moves have been going on the inside here. And Slap Bus, he's on the inside himself. Is he going to try and make the move around the outside? He's not going to make it stick. He's going to try it, but he doesn't quite get the traction there in the end. And he's going to have to just wait another lap. Is he going to make this? Is he? Gonna, this is so interesting here. Oh, this is completely thrilling stuff here from Deer Hunter and Slap Bus is one of these two are going to win the race but just who is it? Slap Bus does seem to have a better overall pace and I'm sure if he does end up overtaking he'll pull ahead but Deer Hunter he's doing a phenomenal job at defending against Slap Bus trying to get helping further and further ahead in the constructors the team's championship and Slap bus might be so close that he might have to make the move on uh, around the outside here or the inside here. Uh, but he again just backs out, which is the smart move to go for. Five tenths behind now. He's a bit further behind than he was than he was here last lap. But again, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think he's going to be able to be close enough this lap. But again, it's just going to be same routine. Deer Hunter goes defensive, although he's gotten a much worse exit out of the final corner. He's going to try and make the move around the outside of Slap Bus, and he's going to make it stick this time. There's no contact between the two, but he manages, manages to make the move stick, and he's into the lead of the race again. The gamble has paid off in the end, and Deer Slap Bus is back in the lead. Oh, wow, oh, wow, what a fight that was in the end. Uh, and commiserate, uh, Deer Hunter is still trying to stick with Slap Bus for the time being, but I don't think it'll be enough. Slap Bus just has too much pace around this circuit. And frankly, most circuits, but that's not, that's not something that Deer Hunter is going to listen to. He's going to try and fight back himself. This is not something I anticipated, given how closely Slap Bus was pushing Deer Hunter by. Uh, given how uh, at, in the previous laps I didn't expect Slap Bus to be put under so much pressure I thought he was going to pull away at this point and you can see now Deer Hunter 3.6 temps he's about as close as uh, Slap Bus was when he overtook uh, Deer Hunter last lap Deer Hunter is going to try and make the move now you'd imagine Slap Bus has not gone as defensive he's maybe like begging he's maybe inviting Deer Hunter to try and make the move, like almost taunting him. But Slap Bus still in first place for now. Uh, Deer Hunter maybe tactically just not going for the move of Slap. He, know, he now knows that he can keep up with Slap Bus. And there's only going to be one more real opportunity for Deer Hunter to try and make the move for the lead. And that will be into turn one for the last time. And we go through the tricky sector two now as a lot of time very easy just to lose time in the dirty air of the car behind uh, car in front as we see the ghost of that car of brt wolf he obviously didn't end up being able to join in the end and that is music to the ears of slap bus and deer hunter with brt wolf out of contention really it'd be it's a real shame for brt wolf who's lost out on 50 points uh, potentially losing out on 50 points to slap bus although maybe if deer hunter has anything to say about it it'll only be 43 
but round the final corner for the second to last time now. Four, four attempts separates uh, Deer Hunter and Slapbus. They're weaving about now for Slapbus. Is he going to be able to defend Deer Hunter now? He's going to be able to, and it looks like if all things stay as they are now, through the final lap, it is going to be Slapbus against Deer Hunter. Uh, against as Alex Daegu has made an uncharacteristic mistake as the lap car of um, BRT or getting in the way a little bit of that bus and Deer Hunter but Alex Daegu now down to P5 which means Sam95 is now in a position to get back-to-back -back podiums which is uh, which is very very impressive indeed he's very he is a quick driver but he's uh, after the first couple of races of the season he was around the midfield sort of area but Deer Hunter now Going to try and still, he's not given up just yet. There's maybe a chance he can out beat out Slapbus on a drag race to the line. So he's going to try and want to be as close as he can coming into the final couple of corners. Maybe force Slapbus into a mistake potentially. Maybe make him think he's going to try and make an unconventional move into the final two corners here. Slapbus rounding the fi final two corners for the final time. Is he going to win his third race of the season? It's looking like it's going to be. It's, but Slapbus just about wins the Dutch Grand Prix in Tier 5 of WOR. Uh, Sam95 who rounds out the podium. And what honestly take about both of you for uh, and both all three of you even in the top three you all deserve to be in the podium positions there you uh, but especially slap bus and deer hunter for such a thrilling conclusion to that race and slap bus making a gamble work he remember he pit three times in three laps in under the under the mid way safety car that's and that just shows why he's leading for championship at this point in time he's, he's just in a league of his own Obviously, drivers like BRT Wolf and Isvan Tomasi are. Oh, excuse me. Uh, um. Okay. Uh. I. I don't know if that, that's. That is um concerning there. That I. I did not want that to happen. I definitely didn't want that to happen. Um. As. So in game, Deer Hunter has won the race now. Uh, that's something that's definitely going to be a post-race stewarding decision there, unfortunately. So, so even though we don't, we can see what the game says the result is at the moment. We won't know what the official race result will be for another couple of days, and that feels terrible for me to know and to have to say because one, I don't think Deer Hunter will be wanting to have this happen to him to be on the top step of a podium arbitrarily, arguably arbitrarily. And I don't think Slapbus would have wanted that, to be brought all the way down to P9 for something I was not aware you could even, I didn't, I wasn't even aware you could get 20 seconds worth of penalties for ignoring yellow flags post-race. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a game glitch personally, but it doesn't take away from the drive that Slapbus put in, that Deer Hunter put in, that Sam95 put in. But Artem and Alex Daegu put in as well, all of these drivers are creating a, yet another incredible race when at one point it looked like it was going to be quite a dumb affair. So to all of those drivers, thank you very much for such an entertaining...